this was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. Well, the giant moves. He's got a spear in one hand and he's running really fast and spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody yells, shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge and I blow his head off. I feel something pulling at my leg. And I look over and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reached my hand into this bush and I touched air. Couldn't breathe and I couldn't move because I know I'm seeing a monster. Yep. Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals. I am your host, Tony Merkel. Thank you for being here. If you've had an encounter or a story you'd like to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me, just get a hold of me. And if you want more shows every week on Thursdays, we release a bonus show to members only on the website. So if you want to hear more of The Confessionals on a weekly basis, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, and become a member today. And never underestimate the times that we live in. And if you want to make sure you and your family are prepared for any emergency when it comes to food and emergency supplies, go to preparewiththeconfessionals.com. That's preparewiththeconfessionals.com. And there you can get yourself emergency food that will last up to 25 years shelf life. And that's a great deal in my book. Now, this week we have Derek and Taylor coming on the show today. We're going to start off with Derek, who actually saw a rake creature at his window at night that was trying to get into his room. He did reach for the gun and he didn't shoot it, but he thought about it. And it's a very interesting story. And then we're going to bring on Taylor, who found this show and started having experiences after she started listening to this show. But don't worry, there's a happy ending when it comes to Taylor and her husband and their experiences in their home. Very interesting conversation I had with both these people. So let's get to it right now. All right, today we got Derek on the show. Derek, how you doing, brother? Good. How you doing, Tony? Doing good, man. Doing good. So, uh, Derek, you and your stepbrother both have uh, some interesting experiences, as I say, uh, that probably relate to each other, but you didn't know about your stepbrother's experiences until you had yours. You told it to him, and he said, yeah, he saw that too. Uh, so why don't you start us off with your stepbrother and what he saw, and then walk us into what you saw. All right. So yeah, the really what it was is I, after what I saw, I, I mentioned it to him and he said, Oh yeah, I saw something that was just like that. He said, he said, called it the monkey man. He said, Oh yeah, the monkey man. And I was like, well, what are you talking about? You see the monkey man. He said, well, it was just looking at me through my window and then it just took off. And that was all that he really had to say about it. He's not one of those guys that really likes to get into the, the story too much or, or even mention it to a lot of people. He probably wouldn't have said anything if I wouldn't have mentioned uh, what I saw the one night. So he had seen something that was like it. I assume it was probably very similar or the exact same thing. But that's where uh, he comes into play on it. Okay, so you're st- you see something, you go to your stepbrother and uh, you tell him about it and he's like, oh yeah, I saw that too. He calls it the monkey man. Now, I know you're calling it something different. We'll get into that after you tell us what you experienced now. Yeah. So 
what it was, I was just sleeping in my bed um, at my parents' house. They have, to give you an idea of the location of it, it would be, it's got a valley on each side of the property. And the area that my parents' house was in, this is back in, I think it was about 2012 is where, or 2012 is when we, uh, I kind of worked out the timeline too. Honestly, I hadn't really talked about it a whole lot for so long that I had to work it back and figure out when exactly I lived with them. But they have two little valleys on each side of their hill or a house on the property there. And they're about 50 yards across and about 50 feet deep, but basically small streams on each side of the property kind of run and make a triangle. And the bedroom window where my bedroom is, is on the side of one of those. So it's just to out my window. Basically there's a little bit of yard and then it goes to that little, that little Valley. We have fires down there and things like that. Uh, the night that it happened or the night that I saw this thing, it was a clear night. There was a bright moon out like it was just a few nights ago here. I mean, it's so bright out. You don't even need a light to see anything. You can just see perfectly, uh, perfectly clear. And it's just really, really bright. And the weird thing or something that's different probably about my parents' house is the window that my bedroom was at is it's ground, it's ground level. There's a hill that goes from the front down to the back. And this window is in the middle of the house. So when you're standing by, it's only about six inches off of the mulch or the ground that's right there. So you can walk right up to the window. And if you're standing by the window, it's probably, uh, you know, a little bit above your belly button or in the middle of your chest or not, not, not quite your chest, but that's about how tall the window is when you're walking up to it. And their house doesn't have screens on it either. I mean, it's a newer home. It's a nice house. They just don't have screens on it. Um, normally you wouldn't have your window open because you're going to get eaten by mosquitoes, but I have a friend that works for the Minnesota, Minnesota Mosquito Squad. It's a um, Hennepin County, the county from Minneapolis. They actually pay for this service. So if you have a lot of mosquitoes like they do because they have the small creek that runs by um, by the in the little valleys that are right next to the house there, you can call them and they come out. My buddy worked for them and he would come out there and just slay all the mosquitoes. They basically put down a big fog and it kills all the mosquitoes. So. When you get it like that and it's a decent night out, you can crack your window open and sleep. You know, you just get a nice breeze going and and that's yeah, nice. I mean, it is heavily wooded all the way around the property or all the way around the house. It's kind of just a nice neighbor. It's a nice neighborhood. I mean, the houses and the properties are, they're spread out more. So our neighbors are there, but they're um, about 150 yards away, I would say. So everyone's got at least probably eight or nine acres to each home that's in that, uh, in that development there. So I was sleeping and I had my window open about six inches or so. Um, and I was just sleeping on my back. Like I said, it was a bright, it was a just one of those moonlit nights where it was just very bright. And I woke up, I was sleeping on my back. I woke up in the middle of the night and I looked over at the window and there was this thing just crouched down. It was just crouched, like haunched down. Like I really don't know how you would, Kind of describe it. It wasn't on all fours. It was just squatted down, but it was looking at the crack in the window. It was looking at that gap opening. It wasn't really looking at me. And when I first looked over and saw it, I'm like, mm, I'm going to be able to sleeping. So I just grabbed my leg. I pinched my leg. I pinched the side of my leg. I pinched as hard as I possibly could. And I was like, well, definitely not sleeping. So I pinched myself again one more time. And I'm like, yep, we're definitely not sleeping. And this is just me thinking to myself. And this thing still crouched down. It's, it's looking, it's like studying the window for some reason. And I start looking at it and I'm like, yeah, that's definitely not any type of animal. I've been hunting all my life. Um, and I mean, a duck hunt, a goose hunt. I got a lot of nice deer that I just got the other year. It's on the wall. So I can identify animals. I've been hunting all my life. And uh, yeah, it definitely wasn't anything that I've ever seen before. So as I was sitting there, I just kind of started to squint my eyes a little bit because I didn't want to see that I was just wide awake staring at it. So I squinted my eyes some and just kept on watching it. And I watched this thing and I'm like, hmm, what, what's it even going for? What's it looking for? What's it, what's it want? There was no like big fear set in where I was so afraid of it. It wasn't that big. It wasn't very big at all. I'm like, eh, I could, it's not really a danger to me. It, it can't get in. It wasn't like grabbing at the window or anything like that. It was just looking at it. And as I watched it, I'm 
thinking to myself, well, what are they even looking for? And that's when it occurred to me that it was looking for, it, it was looking for a way in or trying to get in. The windows that we have, they're crank windows, but the crank actually folds out and then you crank it and then you fold it back in and it folds into itself. So there's nothing for you to just reach in and grab. I mean, you could if you knew it was there, but they're kind of like hidden. Um, not like the regular window crank where it's just always out and you can grab it. So as I watched it, I noticed that it was trying to get in or looking for a way in. And again, I wasn't grabbing on the window or anything. But once I noticed that, I'm like, well, this thing's definitely not coming in here. And I just slowly started sliding my right leg off of the bed until I set it down on the ground. And then I slowly started sl sliding my left leg with it, like trying to leave my torso in, uh, torso in place as much as I could. So I was doing it really slowly. And mind you, I had a good 30 seconds to sit and stare at this thing and definitely identify that's not something I've ever seen before. So once I got both feet on the ground, I just kind of slid my torso over and I stood up quickly. I opened up the door that is in the, uh, that's my closet door right there. So that's where I have my 10 gauge at and it's always loaded. So I grabbed the 10 gauge. I turned and I didn't flip on any lights. I turned, went to shoulder it. And right when I was going to shoulder it, we made eye contact. It turned and just darted off straight into the woods. And I just remember when I got it up to my shoulder, I had like a shot that I could have taken at its back, but it just, it wasn't feasible at the time. I mean, if I would have shot and we'll just say I missed it, that would have been an interesting thing to try and explain to my parents. I just shot a 10 gauge round straight through the window. Yeah. So, so I didn't pull the trigger on it. And right when it ran off, I was just like, holy cow, that thing was fast. I mean, it was unbelievably fast. It was so quick when it ran off in the woods. And that was, uh, it just, I just didn't have enough time. I mean, I trap shoot and everything like that. So I know when I can get a shot on something and this thing, it just moved away so fast that I, I just really didn't have time to pull the trigger and, and get it. If it was still would have been squatted there, I would have definitely blasted it. That would have been nice. But I just remember seeing, saying, oh my gosh, this thing is so fast. And then I was kind of upset because I figured it would have been worth some good chunk of change if I would have downed it, but <laughs> it didn't happen. That's that's what it was. I was able to sit there and look at it, and I'd never heard of this thing that people called the rake um, at this time. Never heard of it a single time in my life. Um, but then probably, you know, I told a few friends about it, and they're like, oh, you're crazy, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I mean, I'm stone sober, 100%. And um, so there's no drugs or alcohol involved with it. And... I just didn't really think much of it for quite some time. And then one of the days I'm like, oh yeah, I saw that thing. Maybe I'll look around and try and figure out what it is. And then I saw some stuff that people had saying, oh, the rake this. And, but that, that really wasn't what it was though. Like the pictures that people put up saying with the rake, that's not really what it was. It was something else. And I shot you a, a photo, Tony, that not a photo or drawing that somebody did. I think they put some, they, someone put some comment in there, something like that on the drawing. And so like, yeah, right. And I was like, uh, I don't know who did the drawing. It was some, something that I found. I think there was someone that was uh, in Canada that I found on Facebook that said that they had seen something like that. So yeah, that was and once I saw that photo, I was like, that's exactly what it was. That was it to a T that's, that's the thing that was sitting there squatted by the window. It had the whole, legs bent back like i don't know like a werewolf legs if you will but the thing wasn't hairy at all i mean it was gray it was small as in if it was standing straight up and down uh it's probably like five and a half feet tall um it wasn't very heavy it was it was a thinner looking thing um had longer arms on it i didn't see big claws on it or anything like that um and i mean i've looked at the window still since and like looked around to see you know, are there any marks on it from it grabbing it or anything like that? And I didn't see any marks on it. Um, but yeah, it was just that, I mean, it's got the big, the big black eyes, like people say. So obviously it's got really good night vision. I don't know how that all comes into it or, or where this thing comes from or is. I mean, I've got a trail camera out there that I run all the time. And then I just check it just to see who knows, maybe it'll pop up, but the weird thing is, is I've never heard one of these sightings of this kind of like rake like thing. I've never heard of one occurring in the winter, which is kind of interesting. And I have heard another story about someone saying that it was kind of by a valley or, you know, 
in between two hills type deal. But um, yeah, it was uh, something else. I don't know. Yeah, it definitely sounds like uh, a crazy experience. And yeah, when you sent me the pictures over, or not the pictures, but the picture of um, the drawings of this creature, it, it's like to describe the audience. And if you want, go ahead and uh, to head on over to the website, and I'll post it in the uh, description on the website. Uh, the the drawings that you have here, it's like the, it shows the anatomy of this creature, and uh, just by looking at a first glance, I mean, it, it looks like a, a rake creature to me as to what I'm looking at here. And if this is what you what you saw, at least as close as to what you saw, uh, that's terrifying, man. That's like, I mean, I, I, I don't... Dude, I don't even know if I would have had the, the, the guts to get out of bed to get the gun. Yeah, it, uh, it was something else. I mean, like I said at first, it wasn't when I saw it, it was just trying to figure out, well, am I awake or am I not? And then I was, as I watched it, like I said, I was just trying to figure out like, well, what's it doing? But yeah, once I knew that it was, or once I figured it was looking for a way in because of the way it looked at the window cell, I mean, it was scanning it like up and down the edge. And as it was doing that, it was paying no attention to me at all. And it was just scanning all around the edge of the thing, kind of like moving a little bit back and forth, up and down, staring at it, kind of like an owl. And that's when, yeah, that's when I'm like, well, I'm not going to let it in, whatever it is. But uh, like I said, it couldn't have got in. It would have had to break the window to get in. But uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely, it was interesting. I don't know. I don't know why I wasn't really fearful of it. I mean, if, I mean, now if I saw it and it was the same situation, I might be a little bit more fearful of it just because of watching stuff online. But, you know, at the moment I hadn't heard of anything like that or seen anything like that. So I just had no idea what it was. I just knew that uh, it wasn't coming in. Yeah. And it makes you wonder if this creature has done something like that before where it goes into somebody's house through a window. And that's why I was doing it to begin with. Uh, that's an unsettling thought too, you know, <laughs> to think that it might have done this before to somebody else's house and just couldn't figure out why it couldn't get into your house, uh, especially with the windows cracked. Um, now, I interviewed a guy uh, a while back and I, I don't even I don't remember what episode this was, but he had seen a rake. He he pulls into his driveway and he and his wife saw this creature sitting in the or uh, yeah, I believe it was sitting in the in the backyard of their house or I think maybe in between him and his, his house and his neighbor's house. It was something like that. And uh, the way he described it. I got a mental image in my head. And when I look at this picture, I'm like, that's exactly what I pictured in my head of that guy and his description of what he saw that night. Uh, now, your stepbrother, if if I remember correctly, you really don't know a whole, many, whole lot of details as to what he experienced. He just called, he, when you told him what you experienced, he's like, oh yeah, I've seen that. It's the I, I call it the monkey man, but he didn't tell you the situation around his sighting, right? No, no, he, like I said, he wasn't going to get into much detail about it. He was kind of skeptical or whatever you want to call it, even though it was there. He just called it. He said, oh yeah, the monkey man. And I was asking him, but he's like, no, it's just it. That was it. And that's really all I could get out of him. So he didn't really give me a whole, a whole lot to go on with it. You know, when it was or what exactly it looked like. I didn't really pry him too much for it. Yeah, it's understandable. I understand. Um, it makes me wonder... Do do you, at being somebody who saw this creature, when he said monkey man, did that make sense in your mind that, you know, somebody would call it a monkey man? Yeah. I mean, it, at, at a glance, you know, when you start, when you first look at it, I could see someone doing that, you know, the, or calling it monkey man. I mean, if you took a monkey and maybe took all of its hair off of it, maybe it would look similar, you know, somewhat like it, but you'd, you'd think he was just kind of assimilating it to something. Do you think that this is a one and only creature kind of thing, or do you think there is uh, more out there in the area that you live? No idea. To tell you the truth, no, no idea. What do I think? I, I don't know. I just saw that. I just saw it that one time, and I don't really go a whole lot past that on it. I mean, of course, there's a million stories you could think up or make up of it, but you know, in this thing, I just happened to see it that one time. And it, without, it was really interesting that I was able to look around on Facebook and find someone that had a drawing that was just like it. And I was just like, someone else is seeing this thing. 
or something. Maybe there's more of them. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'll tell you the truth. Man, incredible. Uh, I don't think you mentioned it on the interview. And uh, if you don't feel comfortable saying it, that's fine. But can you at least tell us a general area of where this happened in the country? Yeah, it happened in Greenfield, Minnesota. There's a road called Whisper Creek Trail. And that's if you, if you look up Greenfield, Minnesota and find Whisper Creek Trail, There'll be uh, houses off of that, and it was one of it was one of those homes is where is where uh, it happened at. I mean, it's uh, yeah. So you can see how it's heavily wooded. I mean, my parents' place is basically hidden in the woods, um, and yeah, that that's uh, that's where it was. Well, you had mentioned that it was interesting about it coming through the window, and I know there are some other stories that I read after I kind of saw that that uh, drawing when I started actually looking into it a little bit, uh, just curiosity for curiosity's sake, there were people that had mentioned, and it's actually quite a few, there's like a handful of stories where people mentioned that they didn't have their screen uh, on their window and that it came through their window. I mean, some of the stories are pretty crazy. I mean, I don't know if it's, they have some pretty, pretty interesting ones out there, but I know that that was one thing that uh, stuck out was that people had mentioned how they didn't have a screen on their, uh, on their window. So I thought that was kind of a interesting, um, you know, similarity from my story to some of the other people's stories that I heard. Did they mention like when they were talking about the screen, did they mention that as in like their windows don't have screens or did they mention it as in like after this experience, they looked at their window and there was no screen there? Uh, no, that they, that just they didn't have a screen on their window like in their area or wherever they live they okay. just didn't they didn't have a screen on it so their window is wide open gotcha okay uh now you mentioned about how you have trail cams out and you would love to catch it on trail camera obviously you're a hunter you mentioned that and you're using your trail cams for you know spotting game as well uh has it ever crossed your mind or have you ever had a desire to go out there specifically looking for this thing uh, no, not so much. I mean, I, I don't really want to sit in the woods for it just cause I, I think I'd be at too much of a disadvantage for it and tell you the truth. I mean, I did, <laughs> I talked to my parents. I'm like, I want to bear trap this thing so I can catch it. And they're like, yeah, that's not happening. Cause we have dogs or they have dogs. Um, I mean, I have one too, but they have dogs as well. And that wasn't going to happen. So as far as going out and trying to find it, uh, I just think it's so much of a one-off. I think when we met eyes, he knew I was just about to plow him in the face. So he decided, uh, he wasn't going to come back. I don't know, but maybe I can get him. Maybe I can get him on camera. That'd be a nice thing. They've got yeah. these new trail cams that will send you your photos. Um, you know, they have, um, not Wi-Fi, but they're hooked up with satellites. So it'll take a photo and then it'll alert you saying, Hey, it took a photo and it'll send it to you. So I mean, maybe I can do something to try and catch it on on a camera, and I think that would be pretty cool. That would be, you know, enough for yeah. me. I mean, that would be incredible. So if that ever happens, man, please share it with uh, with me so I can share it with other people because that would be awesome. Uh, last question here. You talked about how when it ran away, it was extremely fast. Do you, looking back at it, think that the speed of it was almost unnaturally fast or do you think that it was just you know fast uh, just a fast creature do you think there was maybe something more to it because i mean these creatures i mean they, what you described and what we hear about the rake creature uh they have characteristics that seem like it shouldn't exist you know and uh i'm just curious as to how fast if this was something that you felt in the moment that maybe it was uh ungodly fast kind of thing you know like supernaturally fast it was, I would say it was, it was faster than anything that I've seen from zero to however fast it ran away. Uh, I mean, when I hunt teal, teal can fly up to 55 to 60 miles an hour and you have to be ready for them. So the moment they fly by, you only have an instant to react and pull up and shoot at them. And I mean, that, that, that same reflex is what I used when I was going to take a shot at that thing, but it was, it was gone by the time that I could even really I mean, get it shouldered and I was like ready for it. So it was a supernatural, like it was like Superman. No, but was it so, was it fast enough to be believable as in that it was like, it was something. Yeah. I mean, I just think it was really fast for whatever it was. I mean, it kind of just took it really right when we met eyes and I went to pull up the gun. I mean, it turned and basically uh, pushed off and grabbed the ground with his front, 
little hands, whatever. It did that twice. And then right when it hit the little bottom of the hill, it just kind of transitioned a little bit. It took a few steps when it was not straight up and down. It was still angled, but he was gaining speed and he, he blew right into the woods. It was, uh, I don't know. Sorry if I got off topic or, or whatever. It's, uh, it was believable fast. So it wasn't like so fast that I, I would never believe that something can move like that. You know, I got you. Um, I know I said last question, but this is the last question. Uh, and this is more, I think you might've touched on this, but I just, I'm having a hard time remembering what you exactly said. Did you go outside at any point after that, like the next day and look for any kind of tracks and stuff from where it took off from your window? No, I didn't really, it wasn't, uh, no, no, uh, it, it was winter. Things where I went hunting for it. Yeah. It was winter time, wasn't it? No, no, it was summertime. Oh, it was summertime. Okay. Yep. It was summertime. That's how I had the summertime full at moon type deal. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's, it was still summertime. Nice enough for you to have that, that nice kind of cool breeze, but yeah, definitely um, summertime. I think it would have been like, um, I mean, I guess it'd be, it was in August or something like that. Yeah, August. August. All right, man. Well, listen, I appreciate you coming on the show and sharing this story, man. It's uh, been interesting, and I always like hearing a good old rake story. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, having me on the show. If anyone else sees something, I mean, maybe bring it up. Uh, you know, hop on to one of the shows and let them know what you saw, and they'll be the first person I, I don't know, let know if I get any clothes of this thing. And I'm feeling good. All right. Well, after hearing that experience, I think our today's sponsor is absolutely quite fitting because it is Feels, which is a CBD product. It's not marijuana. You're not going to get high using this product, even though maybe some people in this world could use getting a little high after hearing that story. Feels is just a CBD product that will keep your stress levels tamed, anxiety down, chronic pain nullified, and it's all because Feels helps you feel good. Do you have trouble sleeping at night? Because I promise you after that experience and what you're about to hear, you might have trouble sleeping. And that is why you need Feels. Feels is a premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. It's a membership-based subscription, so you don't have to worry about putting reminders on your phone to, oh, I got to go get my CBD again, go down to the CBD store or whatever it is, or go online and put your order in again. No, you wake up in the morning, you're feeling a little stress and anxiety ridden, and you look over and you see that feels bottle is empty. It doesn't matter because you can go downstairs right at your door. It's right there on time as usual. And that's a great feeling that feels offers clutch. Now, how do you take feels? All you got to do is put a few drops under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. That's all it is. You take a few drops under your tongue, it gets going through your veins, coursing through your body, and all of a sudden, five minutes later, you're feeling like you're walking on clouds. You ever wonder what it's like to be in heaven? You ever wonder what it's like to feel like Cupid floating on a cloud? Why don't you try feels? Because you're going to take that stress and anxiety that's bogging you down and weighing you down like a ton of bricks, and it's going to alleviate you and make you feel like you're walking on air. And I know some of you don't use CBD, some of you never tried it, and some of you want to try it, but you're a little nervous about it because you're not exactly sure how to go about using CBD. You're all new to the experience, and you don't want to go online to a forum where there's a frequently asked questions and read through it and hope that the person who wrote it is right because you don't want to get in trouble at work or not be able to take care of the kids when they're hungry. Go ahead and get feels because they have a real human support. So all you got to do is call the hotline and say, I'm new. I don't know what I'm doing please help me because my body hurts and they'll help you right there on the spot. So not only does it come on time to your doorstep, but they also have real human support for the people who are just starting out and really have no idea what they're doing. Feels makes people feel their best every day and it can help you too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash Tony and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash Tony to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping.
Taylor, how you doing? Good, how are you? Doing well, doing well. So Taylor, you, where are you from, by the way? What part of the country? Uh, we're in Oregon. Okay, Oregon. That's right. That's right. I remember that now. Uh, so you're a relatively new listener. You started listening about, what, six, seven months ago? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, you reached out to me to ask, basically, if anybody ever started having experiences after they started hearing my show. So uh, why don't you just kind of walk us into, you know, what? how did you stumble across the confessionals to begin with? Um, I was honestly like looking for like kind of creepy pasta type stuff because I was uh, a house cleaner at the time and I was tired of all the music on repeat. So I was looking for something different and I stumbled on the confessionals and after I played the first episode, I was hooked and like, that was the only thing I listened to for like three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... I, uh, I know about the whole binging thing. When you find a podcast you enjoy and stuff, you just binge it. Uh, but yeah. so you started listening to the show and you were going through all the episodes. I imagine, you know, in a day's work, you can kind of get through a few episodes. Uh, yeah. What what made you start realizing that you started having experiences? What How'd this all start for you? Um. Well, it all started at my home. And... The first experience I had was a shadow going through my home, and it was a pretty dark shadow. And when we first noticed it, it was me and my daughter, and I have a little cat, and we were in our living room, and then all of a sudden I see this shadow dart around the corner into the kitchen. And I didn't say anything, but my cat and my daughter saw it too, and they like chased after it. And I was like, oh, okay, that's a little weird. And I was like, what do, why'd you guys just leave? And my daughter was like, well, there was a shadow. And my cat's all fluffed up. And I was like, okay, that's a little weird. And then a couple uh, weeks later, um, I was taking a shower with my daughter. And then all of a sudden, all of the smoke alarms in my home just went off. Like, all of them. And I'm in the shower, so I fly out of the shower. I almost slide and bust my head open, but I'm looking for a fire at this point because I'm like, these never go off. They haven't gone off the entire time we've been there. So they all go off. It's like way deep into my daughter's room and they're not all wired to the house. They're just kind of like the battery ones. My landlord just kind of put up some cheap ones. So I thought that was really weird and it never happened again. Except for the second time that happened, it ended up happening to my husband. And he was, again, in the shower, door closed. There's no steam going everywhere. And everything, all of the fire alarms went off again. And we were like, okay, that's a little a little weird. But then it started to get to the point to where every night at 3 a.m., I would wake up just instantly. Just boom, right out of bed, straight up not tired and I'm like okay what the heck at this point we're not getting any sleep and it's been like a good three or four weeks after the fire alarms and stuff happening and it's just dragging me down I like can barely think about anything and I'm trying to do my job and I ended up my job ended up you know slipping a little bit because I could not sleep at all and at this point I was like okay this is a little weird some weird stuff happening and then you know we're hearing like knocks on the on the wall and like increments of like three and you know just kind of the typical you kind of hear stuff of when you have hauntings is basically happening in my home and um and then things kind of started to amp up a little bit more we started I started to get kind of weird weird feelings in the home and you know a shiver up my spine where I'm home alone and you know you just kind of feel like you're in a crowded room and it's just, you can just feel everybody. And at that point, I was like, okay, this is getting a little creepy. So I started to like sage my home and, you know, do all that kind of type of stuff. You know, at this point, I'm not bringing in crosses or my pastor or anything like that at this point. So I'm trying to do all of like the natural remedies to like get bad juju out of the house. And that just made it worse. And then we start hearing you know, things being thrown in the home and, and stuff like that when we're asleep. So I was like, okay, well, this is getting a little bit more severe than I want it to. And it was affecting mine and my husband's mood. We were fighting a lot more than we normally would have, which I thought was really weird. And 
it just started to get more and more intense. As the more I've tried to like cleanse the home and stuff like that, it just seemed like I was pissing whatever was there off. And so at this point, I'm like, okay, this is that's kind of bad. And so one morning, another 3 a.m. morning, I end up getting up and going to get a drink of water, and I'm pissed that I'm awake. And I go back into the room, and my husband's like sitting up in bed. And I'm like, are you okay? And he's just staring. And I have this like vanity at the end of our bed that has a mirror. He's just staring into the mirror. And I'm like, what are you looking at? And I'm looking, and I don't see anything at first. And then I just had this odd feeling that I needed to get my daughter in my bed with us. And she, like, never sleeps with us. So this is really weird that I had this, like, deep gut feeling. I'm like, now I should pull her in bed. So I get her up and get her in bed. My husband's still kind of staring at the, the mirror. I'm not getting any response out of him. So I'm like, okay, weirdo. <laughs> and at this point, I'm getting Sasha in bed. And then I look at the mirror and I see what he's seeing. And at this point, it's like as if the mirror kind of lost its like reflectiveness. And it's like it was like deep. Like you could like reach into it and it's like really deep. Then all of a sudden, I see this figure in the mirror. It was like it was really, really, really far away. And then all of a sudden, it's getting closer. And then this weird, putrid smell came into the whole bedroom. It was just it smelled like death and sulfur and just like decay and just nasty. And at this point, me and my husband aren't speaking because we're seeing the same thing and we're so shocked. And we don't, we don't even know what it is. And then it comes closer and closer. And what I see is nothing but what I could describe as a demon. And it just had these nasty horns and it's like, it had like a, like a red base, but like this weird red oily slick thing. It was just gross. And it had this horrible smile, just ear to ear, just a nasty grin where it just was just pure evil. And the stink was just there. And at this point, I don't even remember falling asleep, but we ended up falling asleep as like we're staring at this thing. And one thing I remember is, like, it felt like its gaze was looking towards my daughter. And then we end up falling asleep. And then the next day, you know, I take my daughter to school and, you know, I try and push it out of my head. I was like, well, maybe that was just a weird, weird dream. And then I talk to my husband after we wake up and do our morning thing. I finally am like, did you see what I saw last night? And I never described what I saw to him, and he described everything that I saw to a T. And then I was like, we're not insane, right? Like, we can't be crazy. Like, that actually happened. And so after we saw that putrid, nasty, just so vile of a thing, um, stuff started to get a lot more violent in the home. Um, One day my husband was going to get to get into a shower and he ended up getting these horrible, like three horribly deep scratches on his shoulder. I was like, honey, what'd you do? What'd you run into? He's in construction. I felt like, oh, he scraped up against the board or he got cut by a piece of metal, but he's insanely safe. And he's like, I honestly didn't even know that those were there. I just started feeling a burning and then looked and there's three like majorly deep scratches. And I was like, oh, that's not good. And then after a couple of weeks after the main scratch and like that thing that was just there, um, the mood in the house and like, it was just a dark house. You could open up all the windows and have all the blinds open. And it was just, it just felt dark. And, you know, you're always excited to come home after a long day of work. But we weren't excited to come home anymore. And it was getting to the point to where it was affecting mine and my husband's marriage to the point to where we were fighting every night after we got home. Like, but after we got out of the house, we felt fine. And so at this point I'm like, okay, whatever I'm doing is pissing it off even more. And we can't seem to get rid of this thing. So I am like, well, who do we tell to like help us? 
Like, if we tell anybody, we're just going to end up seeming like crazy people, you know? And a lot of people that we're around aren't necessarily receptive to the, you know, the possibility of things outside of our natural realm on Earth right now. So I was like, oh, I don't know. And so we tell my husband's grandmother, and she gets us in contact with now my current pastor and his wife. And they've supposedly dealt with this kind of stuff. So they come over and they bless the home and everything's great for like a day. And then it got seven times worse after that. Like things started flying off the shelves and I got scratched and bruised a couple more times. And then it gets to the point where we're like, I don't know what we're doing. Like we just keep pissing it off and our life's falling apart. And like, I can barely keep up with work and you can't, you know, go to work and say, sorry, I'm dealing with a demon in my house. I'm sorry I can't come into work today. They're not going to accept that. And so it got to the point to where I almost lost my job. And my husband's, you know, not sleeping very well and he's working construction and then it's getting very unsafe for him as well. And so we're like, this isn't working. We should have them come and bless the house again because it felt really good that one day. So we had them come over and try and bless the house again. And, you know, for me, I would, didn't necessarily believe in any of that. And so I felt like it kind of attached to my disbelief in, in what we were trying to do to get it out of the home. And then at this point, you know, they come over a second time. It's okay for a day. And then it's just way, way worse. And it gets getting to the point where it's, it's really, really affecting our moods. And at this point, I'm really struggling with my faith because I'm like, well, I don't really know what to believe. And I've come up from kind of a shady, not a shady background, but kind of a really messed up background. So I've always was, you know, like, well, if there is a God, why would all this bad stuff happen to me? He's not real. Screw him type attitude, which was not the right attitude to have at this point. And so I'm really struggling. I'm wanting to believe and I'm my questioning everything. And at this point, I'm just, we're so defeated. We don't know what to do because our whole home life is just, it's crumbled. It's deteriorated. Everyone's fighting. Everyone's pissed off. No one's getting any sleep at this point. And I have a six year old and she's with all of us with this. And it was just sad to see. And so then. Oh, our the pastor that we had contacted, he had told us about the bondage breaker. Do you know what that is? Like, are you familiar with that? Uh, no, I'm not. Please tell me. Um, so what it is, it's like a book where it breaks, like it breaks ties it with uh, generational sin, with any type of sin that you could have possibly gotten into. And it breaks all of that barrier and ties with that. And, um, it supposedly works for people. And my husband's grandmother had tried to do the bondage breaker book and read through it. And it's like a proclamation of like, you know, I denounce, you know, every, uh, sin that I've ever done. And I don't know, it gets more in depth with it, but she had tried to do it at one point and she had gotten so choked out that she wasn't able to finish the bondage breaker. So she was still kind of messed up and had things fall in her and stuff like that. So uh, me and my husband were like, okay, well, that would be cool to do it with you guys. And then my husband's like, nope, we're doing it now. We printed off like a seven page prayer on how to, to break all ties with everything, you know, bad and generational and any type of thing like that. So I was like, okay, are you sure? We're like, we sure we don't need the pastor and his wife here. And he's like, we're doing it. I'm so tired of this. We need to do it. And so I was kind of like, I don't think this is going to work. Like, I, this is probably not going to work. We're probably going to deal, have to deal with this forever type feeling. And so I'm like, well, maybe let's just, let's just wait. And there's a different part in my past where I have had, I've been trying to like get past different traumas that have happened in my life. But every time that I would try and do that, I would suffer from stress-induced grand mal seizures, which is like the worst type of seizure you can get where you can, you fall down and you stiffen up and you seize really bad and you convulse. 
And every time I tried to like kind of get past this stuff, I would end up having these horrible, horrible seizures. I went to a neurologist. I went to like a brain doctor. I went to everyone to try and figure out exactly why I was having these horrible seizures. And no one could explain anything to me. They just diagnosed it as stress induced. And so at this point, it had been a good like seven years since I had one. And then all of a sudden, I dropped down and I seize out really, really bad. And normally when I seize out, I go black. I don't even know that it happened. And I come to and I'm like, oh man, what happened? But this time I drop and I seize, but I see this, that demon thing that we saw, <clears throat> sorry, um, that we saw in the mirror. And I can feel it's like its hand or its grab, like on my shoulder, just like deep down in the bone. I can feel it grabbing me. And this is completely, like, completely out of the norm for all my seizures that I have had, ever had. Because I'm completely aware in the seizure. I can feel my body going into its contortions and stuff like that. But I'm seeing this thing. And it's sitting there and it's smiling while I'm, like, convulsing. Sorry. And it's just sitting there kind of looking at you like, I got you. And then after that, I come out of my seizure and I tell my husband about what happened. And he's like, do you think that's why you've had these seizures for so long? It's because of that thing. Like it's been following us forever. And, you know, things start to fall in place more and more. You know, that we've had things happen in our past that would be able to open us up to that type of attachment. And so at this point, I'm freaking out. I'm like having a major panic attack and I don't know what's happening because I'm seeing this thing during my seizures and it's just when we're trying to figure out a way to like get rid of it. So at this point, I'm like, yes, let's do the bondage breaker. That was the worst thing I've ever experienced. We needed to get this thing out of our home. And so we end up doing the bondage breaker and I kid you not, there was like this light, this big bright light go through our home from the front all the way to the back, kind of like a scanner. And it then all of a sudden, the house gets light. You can feel, you can breathe. Like you don't feel that dark, oppressive, just gross that it accompanied with it, you know, that smell that would kind of wander around the house was gone. And at that point, I'm like, I believe in God. Right there, right then, seeing that light move through our home and pass through us, I was like, there's no way that that's not real. I'm like, if this demon thing is real, there's got to be a light to it. And we physically felt and saw that light. And at this point, my faith is affirmed. I'm like, I believe it. We start going to church on a regular basis and end up getting married, like, because we had been together forever and, you know, living, you know, unmarried with a child in a home together, which wasn't necessarily what a lot of the family, you know, thought was a good idea. So we're like, well, let's do this right. Let's go about this the right way. And then we attended church ever since uh, the corona thing started happening. And then Things have been better, but it got so severe and so scary during that seizure that after that seizure, I could see in different places where I'd go clean if there was a dark something there or people would come up and I would just get that bone chill like I felt when that thing was basically inside of me, what it felt like. And I can start seeing these dark things around people if they end up having something weird attached to them like it's hard for me to go to different places now if there's like some really dark heavy stuff I have to end up canceling my job because I, I just can't handle it so and so after that light it just things have gotten better but every now and then um you know I'll wake up exactly at like three o'clock and I'll look outside my window and I'll see, like, three dark beings, like, in my yard or, like, by my truck and stuff like that. So 
things have gotten insanely weirder, but they have calmed down a lot since we did that bondage breaker, which was insane. So, <laughs> so you you see three dark beings out in your yard from time to time? Yeah. It's like they're just like hanging out, but they never come in the home after we did that. So, yeah. Did you ever see those three dark beings in the home together? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple times where, you know, it'd be that shadow and it'd be like a cluster of them. It'd be like, they dart, it'd be like, foom, foom, foom. And, you know, my cat would go chase them or my daughter would see them oh. and go look and stuff like that. And there was never a time where, like, they were just boom there. But when I look outside after I wake up at 3 a.m., they're like right at my, my property line and they're like looking in. That's what it feels like. So when- you can feel someone staring holes in like the back of your head. So yeah, when you know, see yeah. these shadow figures out in the yard, are they standing next to each other, single file line? Do they look identical? Uh, there is like one big one in the middle and then like two on the side. So you get the sense that they're not the same thing, but it's no. three separate entities. Yeah. Yeah. And then I don't know what that demon thing that we saw in the mirror and then with my seizures, I'd never ever had experienced anything like that before well i wonder (laughs) if that demon thing in the mirror uh has something to do with those shadow figures now the demon thing that was in the mirror you said that's what you saw when you were having a seizure right yeah yep it was the same thing the same nasty ear to ear grin just kind of like a i got you type of look not something i ever want to see again for sure Wow. Yeah. So you mentioned yeah. about that and how you went through the seizure and uh, you saw this face, you come out of it. And uh, I forget how you worded it, but you, but I think it's either you or your husband mentioned about how, you know, do you think that this is the thing that's been causing the seizures and it's been, you know, happening for a while? Uh, you kind of mentioned about how, you know, you had some stuff in your past and stuff that might have caused this. Are you comfortable sharing mm-hmm. any of that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so starting out when I was really young, I had a horrible father and he sexually abused me from ages like four to 11. It was just consistent. And so just kind of like that dark stuff, I'd never really worked through it in my adult life. And once I started to go to counseling and stuff and try and work through that, my seizures would kick in like instantly when I'm like, At one point, it happened while I was, like, in a um, counselor session, and I had it right there in front of my counselor. And so every time I'd try and bring that up and try and work through that trauma, these seizures would happen, and I was like, yep, I'm good. I'm I'm not going to work through this. I'll just shove it back down. It's fine. Live my life, and I'll continue. And, you know, my husband was like, no, we need to figure out what's going on with your brain because your brain's shortened out. But every time I went to the neurologist or a brain doctor or anybody, they could not tell me what was going on with my brain. I don't have epilepsy. I don't have anything of that. They just said stress-induced grand mal seizures. And I'm like, sweet, I guess you still don't know what the heck's going on, but that's fine. (laughs) And, you know, and then I started doing some more research. And I know back, like way back in like, ancient or times or like old times, you know, when someone would have a seizure, they would think that a demon was seizing their soul. And I was like, this is a little bit too close to home. I'm not going to look up this stuff anymore. I'm just going to try and forget it. You know, and at this point, I had also been working with my pastor's wife in counseling to try and get through these things that ended up happening, really horrible stuff that happened in my life. Um, and I hadn't had any seizures, so I was thinking, okay, well, this, I'm in a good place. I'm in the church doing counseling, you know, this is really good. And then all of a sudden that last one happened and it just, it floored me. It really did. Um, yeah, it was weird. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, have you ever thought about this entity that was, you know, tormenting you during that seizure and that you saw in the mirror Mm -hmm. the idea of it being around for a long time do you think that this thing 
could have been something that was attached to your dad. And oh yeah, because I definitely feel that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like to me almost that like it was attached to your dad, and and uh, therefore it was attached to you. And uh, right, it's it, it's very th- this stuff is very complicated. It's very complicated. It is. <laughs> It, it, that's one thing I've learned is that you know, don't ever think that you have the right answer, the the quick fix answer, because uh, you know, oh, I know. <laughs> it, 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 yes. I, it just as soon as you think you got it figured out, it it, it throws curveballs. Um, man, oh, I'm sorry that you went through that as a kid. I, I know there's that's a lot okay. of, I know there's a lot of people that go through that kind of stuff, and they right. they deal with. They deal with stuff later in life that, you know, sometimes have the paranormal edge to it. And uh, yeah. do do you ever think that maybe um, if it wasn't for this entity being attached to your dad, that your dad wouldn't have been like that? Or do you think he would have been like that either way? Um, I kind of feel like he would have been like that either way. Um, he kind of had a checkered past as well. He was adopted out of Guatemala and brought into a very nasty family. There was a World War II vet that ended up taking him after kind of a weird thing. My mom's family adopted him originally, and then he got separated from the family. And then they got with my mom. I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing. But he had a very kind of messed up childhood as well. So I feel like if anything like that happened to him, so he didn't quite know how to do it. So he just kind of did it with me as well. And, you know, I felt like that, opened me up quite a bit. And then in my young adult life and like kind of like my teen years, I wasn't handling whatever happened really well. So I turned to like drugs and drinking and ended up uh, getting involved with like heroin and stuff like that. And it was ended up really bad. And then, you know, doing my research after this thing's happening and I've got cleaned up from all of that, everything that I did in my past basically opened up for you know, for things to attach as well. And I just was like, oh man, this is just kind of like a hotbed of crap, isn't it? (laughs) So, yeah. yeah. And it's been weird. It's been, I, it's been a lot of, you know, trying to find myself and trying to fix myself to not necessarily fix myself, but, you know, process things and to where I'm not seizing out or having things happen. I have been able to to do counseling and stuff since that last seizure happened. And that light came through our home and ourselves. And uh, we haven't really had, I haven't had a seizure since then. So it's been awesome yeah, that's, <laughs> for me. That's great. That's really great. And, you know, yeah. it, it makes me feel like maybe this was uh, something that had been in the generational family kind of thing. Uh, you talk, I did too. You, you mentioned about you know uh, generational curses. Well, uh, this can be an aspect of that, I believe. And you know, you pursuing a different spiritual path seems like uh, it put a barrier between you and it or those things. Do you yeah. think? Do you think that what you saw in the mirror and what you saw, you know, uh, choking you out, kind of thing? Do you, Do you think that that entity? is related or the same thing as the ones you see out in the yard? Or do you think there are two different categories, two different things going on there? Um, Me personally, I think the thing that we saw is its own self, like its own thing. And I think whatever is outside is just kind of poking at us and being like, did you guys mess up yet? Do you you guys not believe in God anymore type thing to see if they can get it way in? Um, Weird thing is, is that with my husband's family as well, um, I definitely believe that there's generational sin. Um, my husband's grandma or my husband's grandmother. Yeah, there it is. Um, she dabbled in the occult. She was telling me about how they used to make like tables levitate and stuff in like grade school. And she kind of got into some really shady stuff too. So there was a lot of stuff following my husband as well. And the weird thing is, is that, we saw this thing and like, I know this feeling of this thing. I feel it in my bones whenever I'm like out. Um, It's honestly affecting more parts of our family than just us. It seems like it's like hopping from us to like his grandma to, to his mom and all types of stuff. It's, it's, it's been really, really weird to now have that 
I don't know, I guess the ability to be able to feel those really dark, nasty things a lot more sensitively than I ever could before, you know, and it, it kind of shows up to where my husband's grandmother was telling me how she was, <laughs> this lady is like 73 years old, but she was telling me about how she was taking shots with this one guy who's, you know, severely kind of mentally not there and it's kind of bad about how his face, while they were taking shots, turned into that demon thing, like it morphed into this demon thing that we had seen. And God knows why she still hangs out with the man, but <laughs> but she her life's kind of taken a really crazy turn. It's kind of falling apart after she said that she saw this thing. So it's it's really weird to see. It's weird to see how many fingers it actually has in everything. And it's everywhere. Dark shadows are in almost every apartment building I've ever been in. Like, it's it's weird. It's definitely weird to see. <laughs> it's really, really, it kind of opens up your eyes. It's weird. Oh, yeah. I mean, so w- with what you just said here, that dark shadows seem to be everywhere. I- I- is that like dark shadows seem to be following you everywhere? Or do you, or are you kind of sensing them everywhere? I'm kind of sensing them everywhere. But they're like, you know, I could be da 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 having a good day, you know, whatever. And I go into a certain apartment building and it you just kind of feel the dark and the ick in there. It's it's certain places. It's like in the druggy, really bad druggy areas in our town. And, you know, actually the other day um, I was at a really nice part of town and I was in this really, really nice apartment, but like the one unit I went into, like I said, like with my house, it was just like dark, no matter how much light you turned on or how much, you know, how open the windows you got, it's just kind of dark. So it's just, it's just there. I personally don't feel anything attached to me anymore. It's just, it's just out there. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's freaky to think about. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it can be a little freaky to think about when you first start, you know, realizing the reality of what you live in. Uh, right. Because, I mean, it sounds like for the majority of your life, you really didn't uh, consider the fact that this kind of stuff could be so frequently real in somebody's life. Is that is that no. correct? Right. That's exactly right. And, you know, I believe in ghosts and stuff. I was always into, like, the ghost shows and stuff when I was little, and I always tried to, like, freak myself out. But... Not to the extent that we had dealt with before. It was just kind of crazy. Mm, I see. So, I yeah. See. Yeah. I don't know. So, uh, you mentioned experience. you mentioned about grandma. Was that your grandma or his mm-hmm. grandma? It's my husband's grandmother. Okay. And so, uh, she, she dabbled in the occult. And how long ago was that? Oh, that's what I want to say. She was like in her mid-teens to early 20s. And then I honestly don't know what that woman does behind closed doors. So. <laughs> <laughs> to this day? She's a little nut. She's a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma be crazy. Grandma be crazy. She is. So I was like, what, you know, what a 73 year old, you know, lady, you know, is just taking shots in the backyard and, and smoking pot and stuff like that. It's just, she's out there for sure. <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it sounds like there's a lot of different angles to go with this. It sounds like there's a lot. There of- is. We have racked our brains so many times of where it could have stemmed from. And I was like, I felt like I had my dark stuff from when I was little. He, my husband's had his dark stuff since he was little because he's had a not so great childhood either. You know, his parents were, were into drugs really severely and wouldn't take care of them to the way they should be. And my husband would end up acting out as a kid and they'd just send him to juvie and send him to jail and stuff like that. It was just horrible on their end, too. So he was like, well, it could have came from grandma. It could have came from your dad. I was like, it could have just came from us because we've done a lot to where we've opened ourselves up for that type of attachment, too. We've wrecked our brains so many times on what angle it could have came from. All we just know that it happened. And my husband doesn't like to think about it. He doesn't like bringing it up. And me, I'm like, hey, I just saw this crazy dark thing at this apartment. And he's like, I don't want to hear about it. And I'm like, yeah, but I need to talk about it. (laughs) And he's like, we're good. And I'm like, okay, well, still, it's happening. And he's like, I just don't want to think about it. Okay. Well, you experienced it too. So, (laughs) (laughs) so, uh, these experiences all started popping up after you started listening to this show. Am I correct in saying that? 
Yes, you are. But really, it's where I was shifting my ideas of whether God and the whole Jesus thing could be real. Because on your show, there were so many accounts where people say, you know, they were in Jesus' name and everything stops from, you know, from entities to UFOs. And I was like, really thinking, I'm like, there's got to be some freaking validity to that. How is there not? There's over, like, he had over 200 episodes plus of all these people saying that this worked. And I'm like, how can this not be real? And I was really questioning everything. And then that's when everything really started to pop off. Yeah, it seems like... your show exactly, but it was the content on your show that was making me think, dang, this is different. This must be real. How can this not be real? You know? Yeah, it seems like when people start pursuing different lines of thought on a spiritual level and start considering things that they maybe never considered before, it seems like that can be a trigger for paranormal activity to start kicking up because it, it, it just shows the validity to the idea that this is a supernatural realm that we live in and we are supernatural beings and there are other dimensions with other supernatural entities within them. And not exactly. all not all the uh, entities in these other realms are on our side. And so right. when you start switching teams, somebody's going to have a problem with that. <laughs> you know? so, exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, okay, I'm leading more towards this side. And, you know, honestly, my whole growing up and my whole teen years up until I had my daughter, I was just a bad kid doing every bad thing you could possibly think of, like stealing and doing drugs and, you know, riding around without a license and just being kind of like a little shithead, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, I, I do believe a lot of that was influenced by whatever was kind of just tailing around us, you know, like putting these little thoughts, you know, stay in this thin area type thing. And the moment I started rethinking things, it's just, that's when everything popped off and they didn't like it. They're like, uh, no, <laughs> we got you. You're not going to God. And I'm like, no, I'm going. And it just started going crazy. So yeah, it's nice to be able to laugh about it now, but it was, uh, it was definitely intense. And my husband tends to forget about it every now and then, but I, I just can't. I, it's so burned into my brain that that happened and that was real and that actually happened. My husband is like, oh, sometimes I forget that it actually happened. I'm like, how can you forget? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? Like, how can you forget that this was a thing? <laughs> He's like, I want to just push it out of my mind. But, you know, after physically feeling like the grab and just the insideness that it had when I was having my seizures, yeah, I felt like it. I was just, I can feel things to the bone now and I just can't forget that, which is weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's, I think it's more weird that he forgets that that kind of stuff happened at some point, you know, it's like, how can you forget yeah, that? I know he, he's a, he's a good pusher. He likes to push bad stuff out and just focus on the good. So I value him for that because sometimes I get caught up in the, in the baddest stuff and he's more of an optimist than I am. So it's a good balance. (laughs) Oh, for sure. For sure. You need that balance in life for sure. Uh, so Taylor, I I really appreciate you sharing this experience and stuff. And, you know, I think it's kind of cool how it kind of all turned out for you. I mean, you you stumble across the confessionals, you start considering Mm -hmm. different ideas and thoughts on life and life paths, kicks up paranormal activity in your life. You get attacked, you retreat to God, you find a piece there and in the process you wind up getting married. So is it safe to say (laughs) the confessionals caused its first marriage? Yes, actually. Yes. I will definitely attribute that to that because you know, me and my husband had been together for like 10 years. We never gotten married. I'm like, what's the deal? Why haven't we? And then, you know, after everything kind of came to light, my husband's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I haven't married you. Let's go get married. And we had this amazing little ceremony at our church now. And it was an elopement and we did it on Christmas Eve. And it was just, it was perfect. So, so yes, the confessionals is definitely responsible for my marriage. (laughs) That's so funny. That's so funny. Mark the tape on this one because this is a historic moment. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> In fact, uh, shoot me your e- or shoot me your mailing address, and we'll have uh, a couple T-shirts sent out to you guys as a wedding gift. Awesome. Yes, I will definitely email you. That's awesome. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you for sharing that story. I think that's pretty cool. In fact, you're number one 
and we're going to start a tally now. How many people can contact us saying because of the confessionals, they got married? Now, if you get divorced, yes. if, 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 if somebody That's out there, thing. yeah, if you listen to the show and you want to get divorced, don't tell me that. I don't want to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want to know that. <laughs> that doesn't count on the tally. That does not count on the tally. <laughs> but no, if, definitely not. <laughs> but if for whatever reason you're listening to this show and you think it's a good idea to get married now and you get married, we're going to send you a wedding gift and uh, we'll put you on, on the tally for number of people who get married because of the confessionals. <laughs> yes, most definitely. That's perfect. Well, that's the show, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please share the show with your friends. I don't care how you share the show. Just share the show with your friends if you enjoyed it, because that's the best thing you can do to help this show grow. And if you're interested, there is a website with merchandise on it. So if you go to theconfessionalspodcast.com and hit the store page, you'll see that we do have merch in there. I'm not very good at promoting it, but I'm trying to do more of that stuff recently because people say, I didn't know you had t-shirts. Yeah, we have t-shirts. I just don't talk about it. So there you go. Go ahead and check it out. And until next week, friends, stay safe, take care, and remember, the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. Bye. It's hard to find.